I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot for RCBattery.com. Today we are going to give you everything you need to know about chargers. It's a, a bit of a, a primer on chargers if you're really not that familiar. And also to kind of give you an idea of how to properly charge and maintain your batteries. Uh, what the tolerance are, what the limits are of how fast you should charge them, things like that. So let's get started. Okay, of course this charger can be purchased at rcbattery.com, but this is what I would consider a basic charger. I believe everyone should have this type of charger. This type of charger can charge any chemistry. It can balance charge, it can fast charge, it can uh, put the battery into storage mode, and again, handle different types of chemistries. This particular one can be plugged into the wall at home and also um, has the option of uh, being hooked up to a car battery or any other C DC current or a power supply. Um, most of my chargers, I have multiple so I can charge a lot of batteries. Most of my chargers <clears throat> are DC powered and not AC that you plug into the wall. Um, I have purchased power supplies and they output DC power and I just plug them in. And of course, when I'm at the field, you really don't have any choice but to use uh, battery power like this. Some clubs like this one actually have a positive and negative terminal uh, for charging batteries. This is a whole station that can uh, accommodate multiple chargers, say of a solar system here uh, with batteries. Okay, this is my favorite option for charging at the field. Uh, you can see there's a little terminal here. It hooks up to a uh, kind of a cigarette lighter adapter uh, from your car. But this has AC and DC power. I can uh, power my charger, you know, with regular AC current because it's, uh, uh, it will change the power into AC. It's a converter. Uh, this thing has tons of power. I can charge it, even solar charge it. It will last all day. You can charge tons of batteries with it. Um, this is 600 watts. It's fairly large, but you can get twice this capacity. These emergency uh, things are available all over the place. But again, I power my charger with that even at home. Um, but you can use it primarily at the field. It has two separate channels. There's channel one and channel two. You can charge them both simultaneously. Now, the big deal about this particular one um, is that this one is a 400 watt charger. And that means... Um, it can charge 400 watts total, and if it's a, uh, plugged into DC current, it will charge 16, uh, 650 watts. The reason this is important, especially if you're at the field, you can charge larger batteries, um, putting higher current into them. For instance, if you have a five cell, 5,000, or six cell, 5,000 milliamp pack, it takes quite a lot to charge that at five amps. So a charger like this uh, can deliver that kind of, of, of uh, current flow. Um, most warrant, won't, most are maybe 200 watts or so. Now this is total between the two channels. Um, but anyway, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and show you how the, uh, to select different chemistries and things like that, and also how to set the, the particular charger. But before I do that, I want to explain to you why this type of charger is best. There are a lot of chargers, especially chargers you like get with the plane and things like that, or chargers you could just, you know, get off these no name chargers you can get off, you know, Amazon and, and other sites like that. The difference is this is a really good, reliable charger that is pretty advanced these chargers that just come with the airplane, yes, they will put your battery back up to voltage, but it is a completely different animal. I think if you are going to fly RC, what you need to do is get a charger similar to this. There are a lot of good ones out there. I'm not saying this is the only good charger you could purchase, but I'm telling you that unless you get a really good, versatile, reliable charger, you're kind of asking for trouble. I have had Many chargers that were, you know, I thought, wow, I'll pick it up, it's really cheap. But they end up not being very reliable, and over time, 
um, you know, they, they just stop doing their job. Um, they break or connections just keep failing. So anyway, get a good reliable charger because you're gonna use it every time you fly. I think it's a really good idea. The place you will hook your battery up uh, looks like this. There is a spot for the actual uh, full voltage power to be connected. And then of course, the little white connector, which is like right here, that is plugged into the, um, this other port. Now this is a two port charger. Now on the front of this charger, you will see uh, XT60 inputs, but that doesn't mean that's the only thing it will charge. Um, first of all, if you have this, uh, believe it or not, it will just plug right in and fit. Um, the pins are the same size and you can just plug that directly in. If you have another type of, of and like this, this is uh, for a very large battery. So obviously this is an XT90 and will not fit into there. All you need is an adapter and this will take this down to that. This is a four cell battery. It has five leads and it is uh, plugged in accordingly. And as you can see, um, the EC connector goes right into the XT with absolutely no trouble. The nice part about this is obviously it's displaying the voltage and you will be able to select and display the voltage of each individual cell if you would like. To start charging, I, in this case, I press this little button. It takes me to uh, channel one. Now, as you can see, it displays the voltage of each of the cells. Okay. Now, um, the button on the right is going to select the menu. Now, whatever charger you have, there is a menu. So when I click on this, it is going to take me to a, a menu. So now um, I can select the task. In this case, it is charge. This will balance charge this. Uh, some of them have fast charge and balance charge as separate tasks. This one does not. Um, it also displays the, the battery type. In this case, we're gonna go over one at a time. We're gonna do the tasks. There's many tasks that your charger can perform. Okay. In this case, this has a really nice feature. It could become a power supply. It could just output DC uh, current when you plug into AC power. So it can kind of uh, transfer it to DC current if you need it. Um, the other thing it can do is of course charge. There is a discharge function. Uh, obviously you click that, it will discharge the battery. I'm not gonna go into these in detail. Uh, external discharge, storage. Storage is a very important function that we are going to go over in a little bit. Uh, balance, um, this is not balanced charging. This is simply balancing the pack. If you've uh, put it in storage mode and it's uh, uh, out of balance because it's been sitting for a while, then um, of course you might wanna just balance the pack again um, and bring it back to, uh, to where the cells are all balanced. That will always benefit your battery pack and sync charging of course is for charging with uh, sync boards and things like that um, anyway so in this case uh, we're going to go to charge the next part we're going to deal with is uh, battery type this if you select this it will of course give you a list of options which is uh, the first one is high voltage this one is general lipo the next one is lithium ion and LIFE is lithium iron. Uh, these are most commonly used for, uh, you know, things like uh, turbine engines or um, kind of as the, uh, the ECU pack, or uh, you know, they're used in the radios quite a lot. Um, these are chemistry that you don't necessarily want to put in an aircraft to fly an electric aircraft. Um, life batteries have a different type of uh, battery curve where they fall off voltage very fast so they can be a little dangerous for um, for flying aircraft plus lipo delivers way more punch a lot lot of amperage um, anyway um, LIX is basically a, a two cell uh, lipo now um, we're gonna select lipo 
Now we're going to go to cell voltage. Um, obviously, the, the cell voltage is going to charge to 4.2 volts. That is standard. You know, always recommend leave that alone and charge exactly to what it's supposed to be charged to. Um, this is the cell count. This is a 4S battery. Of course, if you click on it, you can, uh, you can choose whatever cell count. This charges max to 6S. Uh, current setting right now is 2.5 amps. This is a 2.7 amp battery, so I would select it and I would change it to 2.7 amps. Now, the fun part here is I can charge this battery um, safely and with absolutely no degradation to the pack. I can charge it at 2C, which means instead of 2.7, I can charge it at 5.4. I don't because generally I'm charging them in the evenings for the morning, but if I'm at the field and I really need to get these uh, uh, packs back up because I have limited amounts of them, I can charge them at twice the capacity. And it's not a bad idea. You can do it all day long. I've been to shows like um, Joe Nall and things like that where we're just burning packs all day long, all day long, all day long. And um, you know, just charge them at 2C all day long, it never hurts the packs. Okay, once I hit start, the charger will take over. Obviously the screen uh, changes colors and now it will go to work at bringing the battery up to current. And at the same time, it will show you the balance uh, progress on each of the cells. Okay, now under settings, there's really one more thing that I really want to cover on this video. The rest of it is, you know, um, pretty unnecessary because it's all very self-explanatory. But I want to go down to storage. Um, it will store at 3.8 volts. If you uh, buy a battery as it's brand new, when you plug it in and check its voltage, it's going to register right around 3.8 volts. And that is because that is the optimum for storage. If you store them fully charged, they will eventually deteriorate. So the idea is if you're not gonna use the battery for three weeks, four weeks, something like that, the best thing to do is put them on storage mode and take them down to that voltage. Then you can put them in a drawer and if you don't use them for five months, six months, it won't matter. The, the cells will be healthy and the battery will remain a good battery. So please pay good attention to storage. If you want your Liperiors to, uh, to last as long as they're capable of lasting, part of this is how well you take care of them. Uh, taking care of them means don't over discharge them continually because you're just abusing the chemistry. Um, they cannot stand to be run at max amps constantly um, and run it down to low voltage and then charged up fast. You know, the uh, even light periods, as good as they are, um, can deteriorate if you abuse them. So uh, take care of them, make sure you store them. Um, I try to store them as often as possible, but you know, sometimes I'm remiss with it, but I do my best to make sure I keep these battery packs in good condition. Here is another very useful gadget. I would never be without one. In fact, I have a whole bunch of them. And these are uh, cell voltage checkers. You see, I'm connected to the balance port and you can see exactly how close to being perfectly balanced this particular pack is. Um, there's a bit more expensive one, uh, lets you choose the different uh, uh, chemistries and so on and so forth. Um, this one actually displays how much of the uh, capacity of the battery is left. Let me, uh, then there's some modes to, uh, you know, go through. You can hit the cell counts, cell two, cell three, cell four, cell five, that kind of thing. And it will tell you uh, the voltage of each particular cell. So anyway, um, these are very helpful. All you do is plug in the balance port. Okay, here's something else I think is very helpful. This is called a balance board. And basically all that needs to happen is you need to plug it in to where you plug in your battery balance port. And now it's got separate 
uh, little balance plugs that you can plug into any amount of cells you have. Six cells, five cells, four, three, and two cells. So you choose the cell count you want. You simply uh, just plug it in and you're done. I have a lot of these. I think they're very helpful. You can get them anywhere. They're called a balance board. Before I complete this, the one other thing I do want to mention is the fact that charging LiPo batteries safely is important. Um, RCBattery.com does sell a LiPo safe. It's a little envelope to uh, basically stick the LiPo inside of it. It's inside there while it's charging and something should happen. Uh, it should catch fire. It's again, it's, it's in a contained environment. Um, Another reason to have a good charger is years ago, I did have a LiPo fire. Um, I think we all know by now that when we're charging lithium uh, polymer batteries, it is best to do it in a place where it's in a controlled environment because, you know, they really can um, be mishandled um, or uh, charged improperly. If there's a, an exact scenario with your battery that you think it's, um, uh, for instance, a four cell, but it's actually a three cell, but the voltage is super high and you're trying to fast charge it, there's an area in between there that it might think it's charging a four cell and, um, and the voltage is just a little low. And if it tries to charge a three cell at four cell voltage, it could overcharge the pack, puff it up, and of course they catch fire. Uh, I have had this happen. I had a charger that wasn't a good charge and for some reason it was on automatic and it just switched itself from three to four cells, puffed the battery up and it popped and caught fire. Um, so be careful when charging LiPo batteries. Um, it's definitely nothing to, to fool around with, but the good news is there's so much smart technology in these chargers that I haven't even come close to having an incident in probably 12 years. And that one I had was a one-off, but it is still advisable to be very careful.